Hello and welcome to the 2024 Tokyo Motorcycle Show. I am RP, your host for this little program here and I will be walking you through uh, the rest of the show. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to be avoiding the manufacturer booths as much as possible because uh, if you want any information on manufacturer booths like Yamaha or Honda, you can find them on the website. It's not important. I'm going to be focusing on a lot of the smaller companies, things you may not even hear outside of Japan. So I am in the base concourse right now. Uh, this is pretty much the open area where most of the very long-standing boosters will be. So. Uh, all the way over at that corner, you have the traffic police and all these uh, training schools for new riders. So every year, Tokyo Motorcycle Show allows uh, high school students uh, and fresh license holders to come in for free because this is really the best way to catch them when they are young. So this is where the basic concourse is. I'm going to go into the first level soon and I'll show you what's in there. Okay, so I'm at this particular booth called uh, HiZ or Hydrogen Small Mobility and Engine Technology. They've got a little uh, prototype and display over here primarily just to showcase some of the basic premises. I'm going to move over here the basic premises of hydrogen based fuel sources it's interesting now obviously everything over here is in japanese so most of my friends out there back in singapore you're not going to be able to read this but uh, if you are interested go on to google and just google this name uh, and this logo and probably just use google translate to learn more about it i'm here at this uh, booth called high jumper art service over here, we've got this gentleman. He is going to be doing some panel lining on a bicycle helmet. You can see some of his existing work on this one over here. And in the process, he's going to be finishing up that one with very fine and well-controlled hand brush strokes. So now I'm at the Olin's booth. Now I wanted to say that I didn't want to go into a big manufacturer's booth, but this is where they have been showcasing some of the custom bikes uh, in their booth. And there is this 1100 Katana that is incredibly beautifully done. It's going to be a bit hard to show you some of the things here because it's very crowded this Olin's booth is very popular there's another one i want to show you the r90 that is very beautifully done look at the front now look at that very well done tank as well as the panel lining that goes into it as well as the well molded seat and rear cowling that kind of shows off the very beautiful suspension and framework. Now you want to know why I don't want to go into the big manufacturers booths like the one behind me, Honda, it is. Look at the crowd behind me. I am not going to enter into one of those. It's too crowded. That's why I'm going to be focusing a lot on the smaller booths that usually nobody wants to enter anyway. Or rather, there's not much of an interest. So I'm here at Italjet. Behind me are all the 
Ital Jet scooters. You'll notice, uh, or you would rather recognize all this. This in Singapore, they are there already, been there for a long time. The 125 and the 200 uh, versions. But behind me are uh, the 300 cc engines that is going to be on the Ital Jet scooters, uh, which is a lot newer. And I think they did change up a bit of the bodywork as well. I'm going to show you in the post. Uh, B-roll for you if you want to take a look. If you, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see behind me, but there is a CF Moto, uh, Papio CL, and the SS back there. I already did a review back in Singapore. The SS and CL were chef's kiss, especially the SS. It was a pretty good pocket bike for what it is. Uh, pretty cost effective as well. Not as expensive as Honda's offerings and just as good looking. But what I really want to be showing is the FB Mondial section. The gentleman that is uh, sitting on the bike that I am standing right beside to. That is a pretty damn good looking bike and I really would want to see this in Singapore. It is very nice. I'm going to show you the, uh, the price and the B-roll later as well. This is the Kijima uh, booth. They are a Japanese exclusive company that makes all sorts of aftermarket parts for motorcycles. So if you look at this uh, Nightster over here, they even got parts for any sort of uh, training school setup. All these extra lights here that can be individually wired to individual controls like you see on our training school motorcycles front as well as at the back. Now it's a bit hard to get uh, Kijima's items out of Japan into Singapore. They don't really have an international website and I don't think they are able to uh, accept international payment or even allow shipping outside of Japan. But if you ever come over to the Tokyo Motorcycle Show in the future, do come and get some of the racks or rather the luggage options that are offered in Kijima's own uh, booth. So the one thing I wanted to really show is last year I was also looking at the uh, the CT110 and the CT125 and they had a lot of luggage options for the two bikes. So as far as I'm concerned they have large rear plate, base plate racks as well as the front as well as side luggages and the step through frame luggage as well. So this is another motorcycle magazine booth. If you're wondering how much modification you can do with a Honda Monkey, you can take a look at this. This is not one of the new uh, Z125 Monkeys that has been out recently. This is one of those very old uh, Z50s that children will putt around on. It's incredibly small. This is seriously overhauled all the way. I don't even see a single thing that would have been original on this bike except probably the tank and the base uh, engine block. But otherwise everything here is probably brand new. Another magazine booth. It's uh, quite surprising that how long publications can exist in uh, Japan. Most of us in the rest of the world have pretty much moved on to uh, reading everything online or on YouTube. But here you have this a modern one to five monkey, very different from the previous one that I showed you. This one has also been dolled up with all sorts of uh, flat tracking or, or rather it kind of looks like a, a flat tracker. And here I'm at the Shoei booth. Now they have a new piece of technology I think they're trying to showcase here. Uh, these helmets are built with an integrated 
Pfizer. A lot of companies have tried that before, but all of them kind of failed. I'm not sure how this will eventually prove to work in the future, but you can take a look right here. These are not exactly cheap helmets by any measure. Okay. If I were to be perfectly honest, the shell itself probably would fall in one of Shoei's mid-range uh, helmets. But then you are tagging on an extra 600-ish dollars just for the additional technology. Now, this, this is really, really why I love the motorcycle culture over here in Japan. You've got little, little companies like this, aftermarket manufacturer companies making all of these beautiful custom aftermarket parts for very specific models of motorcycles out there. For example, this one over here uh, specializes in making stuff for Harleys. And you can get literally every single thing you could possibly think of from fairings all the way to aftermarket seats. And um, this feels good a bit hard but it definitely looks good all the way to exhaust systems luggages and more look they even have a nose bottle over there a great place to outfit your garage if you actually have any space for a garage i am singaporean so uh, this is kind of useless to me this is the EK chain booth. Definitely a lot more beautiful than the DIDs that we run back home. So the common chain brand that most uh, Singaporean riders and Malaysian riders will generally go with is a DID. But uh, the EKs look very good, colored. Now, to be honest, I personally don't really think most sprockets and chains differ in performance uh, and I don't really know about the price because I was uh, looking through the brochure but they didn't have any prices on them. So here we have Shorai batteries. The good thing is you can probably get them back home through Amazon. Now this is generally one of the biggest uh, battery sizes that you can get on probably a large bike like uh, my desert sled and I can comfortably hold it up with one hand this is incredibly light now imagine if you had something small for say a husky 125 this thing weighs almost nothing Here in the Tokyo Motorcycle Show last year, 2023-2024, uh, this company called Amboot, they are back again. And I am going to spin my camera around, if I can get it to spin around. And I'm going to bring you closer, uh, pass through this throng of people to show you some of their luggage options. Now all of these are leather. Last year I also did talk about how I love the fact that they are all leather. They are pretty premium quality and the opening systems are simple and easy to get through and they are also fitted with a large amount of polish behind it. And you can see behind all the different colors now obviously they aren't exactly the biggest uh, luggage options but they are certainly the most stylish personally I would get something like this for a scrambler 
for the side panniers. Behind me is this booth called Felt. Now I'm going to spin the camera around again. And I'm going to show you what they are selling. 100% scooters. I can't remember what this was called because I have seen uh, this body style. Now I'm going to bring you over to the other side. This is what uh, I was looking at and it reminds me of this very old uh, 80s scooter. If I'm not wrong, it was from Honda. A very unique design. I can't remember at the top of my head what it was called. But I believe they are recreating the entire look and then retrofitting them with electric motors. So all of the bikes here are electric and they are very good looking this very simple beautiful retro looking style i'm going to bring you over to another side you can see this gentleman uh, sitting on this very small looking machine i'm going to show you the b-roll later because uh i can't really take a, a good shot when you've got a, a bunch of big men on such a small little bike but this is basically the old uh, recreation of a motor compacto, but a motor compo, not a motor compacto, motor compo, but with an electric motor behind it. It also folds down as well, as you can see, uh, that little steering handle. It folds down and you can actually adjust the height as well. And then when you are not using it, you can push it down for a more secure and smaller storage space. I was drawn to this particular booth because of the range of sneaker looking uh, riding boots that they have on offer. All very beautiful looking. I like the red ones in general. But if I can find a neon blue and orange, that would be great but apparently they don't have one on the lineup right now the one i wanted to talk about is this they also have a helmet that kind of looks like the agv pista but the agv pista costs about thousand two hundred dollars ish this is also a carbon helmet waist over here 1.4 kilos which is kind of a bit weird for a carbon helmet it should be closer to about 1.2 for a full face prices are not out yet but they are very good looking uh, i would really want to see what they cost uh, in future when it does come out so this is the main yamaha booth now i'm kind of uh, excited about the Yamaha booth this year because uh, number one uh, I think it's a lot easier to get myself into the crowd to actually take a few shots but also they are showcasing a number of very cool looking customs uh, then and they actually list the parts along with it so for example this is a touring style MT-09 and as part of the, I uh, can't remember how many years of anniversary, they are pulling out a bunch of bikes outfitted with custom aftermarket parts to showcase how much you can actually customize your MT-09s. So I'm at this little booth over here called Tactile. They sell primarily interlocking floor mats or that are meant to hold the weight and the stamping or rather the rolling weight of a vehicle. You can see over there, they've got multiple colors. They interlock individually and at the edges, they also provide you raising uh, ramps that line the sides as well as corners. Now they are relatively easy to set up in my own personal opinion. If you can take a look, they are all basically like Lego blocks that you can place on your floor. 
not particularly useful uh, for people like us that don't have a single garage but they look to be very good options as HDB floor decor for particular rooms and they can hold quite a lot of weight depending on what you want but the problem is uh, you can take a look over here the very first line that is for a small size single bike uh, one set of them that goes about uh, 10 90 millimeters to 24 10 millimeters uh, that costs you 30,470 yen that's about 300 bucks back home not particularly cheap as a flooring option if you ask me but uh, I'm wondering if that's probably cheaper than just putting on marble tiles but they are pretty good looking for something that you can DIY at home so you don't really need a contractor to do it for you. Okay, I'm here at Talaria Mirai. What caught my eye was actually that one over there. But then later on, when I sat on and took a look at this little Seron looking things, I was kind of excited. Now, end of the day, these are pretty much uh, just electric dirt bikes. But I hope uh, they are going to be brought into Singapore somehow, hopefully there is going to be a distributor there, who knows, maybe 10, 20 years or, or it may never come but this is an exciting little thing to look at. As you can see, over here in Japan, they are already homologated for being used on the roads. Of course, this uh, classifies them as under the moped class. under under. I think if I'm not wrong, this is uh, under 90 cc or it's a kilowatt equivalent. But it's pretty much a very light motorcycle. This thing has no foot controls. So you've got your front and your rear brakes all on the hands. And when you look down below, these are all pretty much motorcycle parts. Uh, with the exception of probably the the rims and the uh, tires, they seem to be made from uh, smaller kapsai looking uh, <laughs> components. But otherwise, these are all legitimate motorcycle parts. And then right behind Talaria Mirai's booth, what do we have? We've got Seron. Now Seron has been in the market with this uh, electric dirt bike style things that pretty much look as if they were made from bicycle components but here's the thing about Seron they are a more established brand they cost a bit more whereas over there uh, I think they are newer they might be cheaper the problem is how do we get them uh, to decide to open a distributorship back home because these things don't exist back home and I would really love to see one of these. If you come over to this little corner here, if you... Some of you are Gundam fans. You may recognize this name. Okawara Kunio. He... I'm not really that old enough to remember who he is, but apparently he is the designer for a lot of the Gundam mobile suits. So f he said he was very interested in working with Seron and he has already worked with Arai to design this particular helmet but he has also already designed some of the aftermarket add-on parts over here that would fit onto this Seron dirt bike. Now uh, the gentleman over there he said this will come with the parts uh, this coming autumn or summer depending on how fast they can launch it and they will be available in Japan so to my American friends uh, all the way across the coast 
do keep a lookout for this because you have Saron's over there. We over here in Singapore, we don't have a Saron dealership. Now, I want to be focusing on this. This is the FX F80 off-road. Right down here, you can see the... Well, it's all in Japanese. You don't understand a single word of this, but you can roughly get the gist of it. Top speed, 85 kilometers an hour. That's for the off-road version over there. And it is all electric. A lot like the uh, Mirai bike and the Saron bike that I showed a lot earlier. This one over here in Japan, they are coming in at uh, 678,000 yen. That is about $6,500 if you're talking about the US bikes. And this is probably uh, the distributor in Japan, Beaton Bikes. And welcome to the second or third or fourth floor, I'm not very sure anymore, of the Tokyo Motorcycle Show. I am now right in front of the Zim Motorcycles booth and they are right opposite, of course, Energica. So this particular section has uh, quite a lot of uh, electric motorcycles. So since I talked about Energica, I might as well just hop on over right here to their booth. Now, most of the stuff that's being shown here in the Energica booth, you can look it up on their own website. Uh, it's not particularly new, the same. But this year, I'm able to actually take a deeper look at the charging port themselves. chains booth they've got a rather creative uh, art set up over here made using expired old chains to create a old suit of Japanese armor they've also done the same thing over here with a replica sword made out of old chains as well this is the BMW's booth. Um, I'm not interested in most of their stuff. They are overpriced and I've seen most of the stuff back home in the Performance Motors showroom. And I've also seen the BMW CE for uh, electric maxi scooter. But here, I'm just gonna show it behind me. Yep, that is going to be a new electric scooter that is going to be following the BMW CE4 line. This is called the CE2. So I'm here at the KDM booth and I'm looking at the KDM 990 Super Duke. At first, I thought that this uh, new headlight was sort of an aftermarket option or a custom option. It looked pretty cool but it turns out that it is in fact the new 2024 KDM 990 Super Duke. So if you thought the 990 was the only one that is receiving that very stylish new headlight design, this is a 390 regular Duke. And over here we have the MV Augusta Brutale 1000 RR all new for 2024 incredibly beautiful symmetrical high slung exhaust an impressively muscular mid body design and then finish it off with 
fancy winglets and the iconic MV Agusta headlights. So I'd like to bring your attention to this uh, builder. They are called Trigia. Trigia, custom motorcycles. Mostly specializing in the uh, custom building of Harley's old uh, BMW R18s, the sort. If you like to take a look at what custom builders do over here in Japan, you can take a look. This company is called uh, Trigia. They are right now partnering with an exhaust manufacturer called Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Uh, they provided some of the exhaust parts for the builds that you see right in front of you. Guess what? Back at 2024 and our favorite Japanese motorcycle stunt rider, Mr. Hiroyuki Ogawa is also here at this uh, particular event uh, as well. He was here last year and um, managed to get some free time to have him introduce himself but this year I don't really want to butt in into his affairs but I want to just show you his bike again for this year. So I'm going to spin the camera around. And there we have it. His iconic triple. <laughs> so this is what we call an auto race uh, motorcycle. It's a racing format that is 100% unique and exclusive to Japan. Now usually the riders are kitted out in something like that. Full body armor with a lot of padding because this is a sport that is incredibly dangerous. If you've noticed uh, the way the the way the bike is set up, the handlebars are offset because the race involves running around a oval circuit in a counterclockwise manner and they are almost always at a full lean. So you'll notice, I'll bring you over here, this is pretty much how much an average auto race bike will always be leaning at and it's pretty much very similar to uh, horse racing now the Japanese really love gambling a lot and this is one of the ways they modernize uh, horse racing into something that involves a motorcycle as well so this booth is uh, not particularly important to give the name because it's a uh, sort of a engineering firm or okay whatever it's called Sakuma engineering but this is probably one of the only places where you can find people mad enough to put a sidecar onto a sport bike and if that's not enough you've even got a big ass V8 boss horse with a suicide shifter on the left And there we have it. This is pretty much the entirety of, uh, not really the entirety. This is just a small snippet of the entire Tokyo Motorcycle Show for 2024. Now, the problem is I can't exactly show every single thing uh, in the halls over here because it's so packed, it's impossible to get a lot of the footage uh, that I want to take without inconveniencing others around me.